Hi everyone, this is Anne Uriarte, Anne Neuro, and I am a diplomat of the European College of Veterinary Neurology. Hi, I'm Joan, I'm a diplomat of the European College in Cardiology. And this is to vet or not to vet? What is the question, Anne? So the question today is going to be PhD versus residency of the European or the American College. Um, is it that different? Can we use it the same way? Um, I guess that the first disclaimer is that neither Joao or I have a PhD. <laughs> so although, I mean, Joao has much more experience with a PhD because he, he did have a started PhD. Um, and, but we have worked with a lot of people that have done a PhD. Um, and we hope to give the insight of what we think that is the difference and how could we use one and the other to apply for um, the residency or for the PhD. So yes. what will be your overall idea? What is the big difference, uh, Joao, between having a, a being a diplomat or residency trained specialist or doing a PhD? So, so I suppose, um, in, in it's my experience. So I, I started by, I want to be a clinician. So I, I knew that I wanted to be a cardiologist. And so I went through the process of, and we've discussed this before, of an internship, getting a residency, and then ultimately doing the exam. And then my choice of a PhD was because at the time I was considering a university career, okay, where a lot more research is necessary. But as um as and then in the, in the process, I realized that I actually wanted to be a clinician. I didn't particularly want to be involved in um that kind of pure science type of research, the research that I've been involved in, I suppose you're the same, Anne, is that we've been involved in clinical research, research, but I knew that I wanted to be a clinician, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I think I think they are two completely different things, but they often come together in um, just gaining more experience in kind of positioning yourself um, in a better position to, to have the best career that you can have. But I, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think if you wanna be a clinician, a specialist level is what you want to achieve because that's what's going to allow you to get and perform the highest level of clinical work. If you want to do a lot of research, I think the power of a PhD cannot be understated. I think it's it's super important. Uh, um, and if you're working in practice like you and I do, a PhD allows you to have a more understanding, of course, of the whole process of what you're going to learn with that um, about research and publications because that's very important in a PhD. Um, but if you want to be a clinician, the training that you go through when you become your specialist is really what's going to allow you to get the jobs that as a clinician and in a way be considered as a, as a specialist. Yeah. So should we um, a little bit describe what will be mm. the difference between what is the training that you get when you do a PhD versus what you when you do a residency? So then we can understand a little bit what you're going to get out of it. So we can yeah. discuss about the difference of the training and then also discuss about um, what type of PhD would you get because you can get a PhD on anything. How do you get a PhD and what type of residencies and how you can get a residency? So um, why would you say, the, because again, you have more experience than me, so when you do a PhD, usually how many years is, and what are the what are the things that a PhD should have to be a good PhD? Yeah, so I, I think you're right. In, in they're so variable. Like I did mine in basic science, so it was stem cells, and the idea was obviously to make to be able to translate some of that stem cells into cardiac eventually. But my my PhD wasn't was embryonic stem cells, um, and. I suppose I suppose the structures are different. I think the structures of the residencies and uh, so internship, residency, and then sitting the exam. So the training program that you have when you when you enrolled as a candidate to to become a specialist in one of the the colleges, like we mentioned, we're both European. You from the neurology, myself from cardiology, but there is also an American. That's a very structured uh, um, kind of. Uh, training. So you start with an internship where you rotate through every speciality, um, and then you choose your speciality of, of that that you that you prefer, and you want to become a specialist. And then it's normally three years um, of training. Um, in the 
in the in the internal medicine one, so in, in the cardiology internal medicine one, we have an, a general exam on the second year where you sit an exam with everyone else that's doing internal medicine, oncology and cardiology. And then in the end of the third year, you have your certifier examination. And that's where I only did cardiology, internal medicine will do internal yeah. medicine, oncology yeah. will do. Uh, with neurology, do you, do you have two exams or just the final exam? No, just the final exam, just one exam. That's right. That's right. And through that process, you do need, obviously, you're trained with other specialists. You do need to go through a checklist of procedures, of surgeries, of scans, um, and you do need publications. And that's where they both, I suppose, meet. Because the PhD, I assume it is also between three to four years. And it varies a lot more. You can have a very clinical PhD where your research is on something clinical, and that would work extremely well if you still want to be a clinician. Because for instance, if you want to research mitral valve disease, I mean, that's a very clinical subject. So your PhD, although it is a basic science, will probably be quite clinical, and they'll be super powerful for what you may then do with your career, because the connections and the knowledge that you acquire with that will probably allow you to continue publishing pu pu uh, publishing um, the uh, on that subject. But if you go to a very basic science, I mean, I know some people that have done in epidemiology and clinically yeah. their problem is not going to. Yeah. Would you, would you say would you say that um, so a PhD is going to allow you to be ex expert on that subject, but it's yes, just on that point. subject and the residency, it should allow you to be an expert on the specialty in a field. Mm, in the field mm. and then obviously you need to progress that one thing that to me is very important also to to point out which I, I was probably not that much aware until I was in university at Tufts University um, because I didn't do a PhD myself but I didn't uh, pay that much attention on also the training when you are a PhD so it's true that a PhD at the end of the day um, you could do it in any subject, um, in any field. So you can be an architect with a PhD, like anyone mm -hmm. could get a PhD. So you get a specific subject, you get some money, you get a grant, you get a university, whoever is that is going to pay you during that three or four or five years to develop that specific subject. Um, but different PhDs have different levels of um, intensity and expertise and training, which probably the residences are, we are more homogeneous because we have the college, the American, not European, they are homogeneous. This is what you need to do to be a specialist. For a PhD, yep. there's not that homogeneity. So if you want a PhD in, a, for example, in Cambridge University, in Oxford, in, in Harvard, those are going to be more difficult. Why? Because the training that you get through your PhD is very different. So through your PhD, on top of developing your specific subject, you're going to be mm -hmm. also be trained on statistics, or you're going to be trained on um, basic uh, bench research, or you're going to on physical. Or, like, there's going to be a lot more training that is specifically to that uh, uh, institution where you're doing your PhD, which probably sure. on the on the American or college and uh, uh, European college we have this kind of overall rules and um um yeah and uh, what would you say description of what a residency should be so we are a little bit more homogeneous absolutely um, and that's the reason that's the reason why the colleges are designed like that so it doesn't matter if you did your residency in america in the uk in a private practice or not the structure of the speciality should be there to to say that yes you've received the training you went through the steps and therefore, you can be called a specialist in neurology or in cardiology. Whilst you're right, a PhD is a is a doctorate in philosophy. Do you know what I mean? So it means that you've you've studied a subject to the deepest level that you can, and that you've published categorically and you've defended your thesis well. And so the skill set that a PhD will bring you is immense. And like you say, you you're surrounded by people that write extremely well, read papers extremely well, statistics. And not only just the practical part, uh, but the environment that you're surrounded in is a is an environment of publications, I, I would say. And so I would often see when someone has a PhD, you know that they're very extremely cap capable, probably, in reading, 
and generating science, generating publications. Whilst when I see someone that is a specialist in neurologist, I know that you've been trained to the level that you'll be practically very, very good. Also, yeah. very yeah. able to read, very able to write, because part of our training requires um, reading and, and appraisal of literature and publishing. But yeah. I, I suspect yeah. that a PhD will probably be a lot more powerful because the environment is one of creating publications, generating yeah. science. Whilst we, as specialists, there's a there's a burden of clinical work that we that we need yeah. to to accomplish. So um, you are a vet that just uh, finished vet school. So mm. who would you say, okay, um, this is what I want to do in five years. Therefore, you need to do mm. a PhD. Or this is what you need to do in five years. Therefore, you need to be a specialist, uh, do a specialty. So what will be the, in five years, who that bed will be to need yeah. PhD yeah. versus a residency? And they mix a little bit, but but I think if you want a university career, I think universities value a PhD a lot more than they value uh, um, a specialist level uh, because a university is an education institution. And so if you want to work in university and if you are more research biased, PhD would certainly be your route. And that's what I would I would invest. If you want to be a clinician, which will then be able to also change the, the, the subject. So publish, be involved in research, but mostly treat animals of, of uh, with that condition that the field that you choose. I would go for speciality, but they mix in a certain point because many, we know this, a lot of people are specialists and then do a PhD or do a PhD and then become specialists. Yeah. Because science, science yeah. right? Exactly. Because also, um, it depends also in the, in which countries we're talking about, um, you are going to have that combination of being a professor, university, but also being in a clinical teaching environment when there is a university hospital so in those situations it's true that the combination of the phd and the residency and some of the residencies now they combine both of them um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i will say that i think that they as you said they are complementary and we need to be aware that of course as we've talked before you can be very good at a subject and not have a diploma and you can be very good at research and not having a phd however oh. if you want to do research the PhD is giving you the tools. It should give you the tools to be the first, the best researcher. Um, mm -hmm. And if you want to be the best clinician, the residency is going to give you the tools to be the best clinician. Then at the end of the day, you know, we all need experience. When you finish your PhD, you're not going to be amazing. You still are writing, reading, and producing um, amazing ideas. Everything requires experience, right? But I think that we need to be aware that those are the tools that they exist out there for you to be the best clinician or the best researcher, and you can combine them as needed. They are not unidirectional, they are bidirectional. Being a, being a diplomat, um, does it help you having a PhD? And does a PhD help you being a diplomat? Or, or getting a residency, let's let's put it that way. If you have a PhD, it will be easier to get a residency. If you had a residency, it will be easier to get a PhD. I think I think <clears throat> I think a PhD will help you get a residency for sure, just with your publications and with the knowledge of of your ability to to publish. Um, I'm not sure if having a specialist will help you getting a PhD actually. Interesting. I, I thought I would say that I would say the other way around. Would you? Mm -hmm. How interesting. How interesting. I would say the In other way. way. I will. I agree with you that having a PhD, then hopefully you will have. You will need to have a publication, so that obviously is good yeah. on your CV. However, sometimes depends also where. If you have a PhD, obviously you've been out of the clinical world maybe for a little bit, true. True. and you have true. a, a true. you're a little bit older. So mm -hmm. it may be a little bit scary to get you back into the clinical floor. And I will be thinking, is that this guy that has been already six years after finished vet school, do they really want to go back to now do nights and do things? You know what I mean? Um, so, to yeah, go it's to very practical. Yeah. So I could be a little bit concerned about 
if that's what they want to do after being yeah. more on research. Yeah. And I will think that if you're a diplomat, you may know more people. You already have some insights on your publications and having publications because you are the diplomat yes. will be easier to get a grant and to get money to do a PhD. That's so defend, defend your point. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's right. It's just, um, um, you know, I, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. Absolutely. But I think um, for a PhD, I wonder if like, if you're being a specialist. Yeah, no, no, I, I see. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I think we're looking at it for a, a little bit of a of a different uh, approach where I understand the practicality of having a PhD, having six years of training of and, and delivering research. I Do you really want to go through the whole process of training as a specialist? whilst it's probably a better compliment being a specialist and getting a PhD. So that's a better compliment. I think that if you have a PhD, it's a big, big step to then go and through the training of a speciality. I see what you mean. I yeah. see what you mean. But I know, I know a lot of people, particularly Spanish or even from Latin America, that and actually at Tufts University, we had a two... So... Um, a, an, an imager from uh, Brazil um, that, uh, you know, he was working in university, had a PhD, had a lot of uh, publications, mm -hmm. and then he mm -hmm. did a residency in, in mm -hmm. the university in the States, and he did get that position because of his experience as a clinician, as a PhD, and, and the strong publication background. Um, right. So he wouldn't have got that coming from Brazil without that. And then also um, the dermatology is a friend also, who did his PhD in Spain because he didn't know what a residency was and then got a residency in um, in Germany because, again, all that experience that he had and he did a residency. In, both of them, they did a residency in the university where they continue right. with the strong publications. Um, right. I think that that PhD will indeed help you more in a university, probably environment where there 100%. is a strong, a strong team to continue publishing. One hundred percent. As you know, as a lecturer, you're very much valued by the publications they generate and by the grants, like you say, and having PhD students. Whilst yeah. in a clinical setting, you're probably more valued if you can get more residents. So if you are a specialist, then you'll get residents. And so yeah. they are different yeah. and they are complementary. I, th I don't think, let's put it this way. I don't think having one or the other will put you in a worse position. That's for sure. No. Because it's extra qualifications. It's training. It's just, can you actually, <clears throat> I mean, we know how long it takes to get these um, qualifications in the amount of work. And we're talking about easily 10 years of your life, just um, trying to get trying to get more qualifications. Um, my approach was that I wanted to be a specialist. And then because I wanted to potentially have a university career, then a PhD would be required. But I knew very, very quickly that I was a clinician. And I actually, all I wanted was to treat dogs and cats um, yeah. to the best of my ability. Yeah. And therefore, the choice of, of not continuing my PhD and focusing on, on my speciality. <laughs> very good. good. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you for being oh, well. here. Um, yeah, hopefully this helped and then we will see you soon.